Hey folks, welcome to ACF Chat Fridays. Uh, this has traditionally been a bi-weekly kind of office hours for the ACF team and anyone who wants to join in and hear what we're up to. Um, we've now moved that to a monthly session uh, and they're gonna be a bit more focused. So in this session, we'll be talking a bit about WooCommerce HPAS, what that is, what we're doing to support that in ACF, and I'll have a quick demo for you. Um, just a quick update on what we've been up to. We Last week, we released ACF 636, uh, which was a bit of a security release, had a couple other bug fixes in there as well. I think, uh, Mike, if you don't mind, there it is, post in the link to the release post, which has the full change logs of all that stuff. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We've been working towards ACF 6.4, which includes support for HPAS as well as, as a bunch of other cool features that we'll get into soon. So yeah, um, let me just get into it here. So with WooCommerce HPAS, I have a bit of a demo here just to kind of explain things a bit. Uh, let me share my screen. All right, so with WooCommerce, they traditionally had a custom post type for their orders, or yeah, it was just a normal custom post type. So when you created a new order or someone went to your site, went through the checkout process and a new order is created, uh, you end up with a fairly customized standard custom post type screen. You see the URL here is just their post new.php with the post type passed in, same as any other. WordPress post type. And um, yeah, so ACF always supported that out of the box. It was fairly simple and straightforward. So if I go over here and add a field group to it, all I have to do is change the post type to order and then save the changes. And it should show up on the new order screen. So I've created just a generic field group here, order comments, a couple other fields, and um, I'll go ahead and add a value for that. And create the order. Um, with WooCommerce HPAS, what they've done is they have added a new way to store uh, orders, and that is in a custom database table. Uh, ACF hasn't supported custom database tables out of the box before, um, but the theory behind that is because the orders are now stored in their own table and not shared with all your posts, pages, and whatever else you might have in your WP posts and WP post meta tables, it should be much faster and won't rely on how much other stuff you have in the table. Um, so WooCommerce HPAS is now enabled by default uh, for new installs. If you have an existing install that isn't using WooCommerce HPAS, you have to go over here and then sync your orders. I just created one, so that one has to be synced over to their new database table. And then once that's done syncing, which can take a minute or quite a bit more than that if you have a lot more orders, um, you should be able to select this to enable HPAS support. And then not only will that switch any new orders to using the new HPAS support, it will also give you a new order screen, which looks very similar, but as the old one, but is now using React. You'll see here, uh, there's this page equals WooCommerce orders. Um, most of this is completely custom, but thankfully WooCommerce did add 
some back compat where we're able to add our ACF meta box here. And you'll see here that in this order that I created a few minutes ago, we are now getting our value directly from the custom database table. Uh, WooCommerce has handled the migration of that value automatically. Um, we can update that value and it will just work. Um, no additional configuration is needed from the ACF perspective. Um, if we come over here to field groups and check out that order fields, you'll see it's the same location rules, post type is equal to order. Um, so basically in WooCommerce 6.4, you'll be able to support HPAs or non HPAs in WooCommerce straight out of the box. You won't need to do anything special, even if you downgrade back to um, not using WooCommerce HPAs and going back to the post meta, you won't have to change any configuration. It is all just handled for you. Um, in terms of where that stuff is stored. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see my screen, but there's the new um, WP WooCommerce orders meta table. And that is where all that is stored. You see here, just like with um, the traditional post meta approach, we have the uh, field value itself, as well as the field keys for each of the fields. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's a pretty quick demo, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of um, how our new integration will work. It's very easy. Um, there was a lot of stuff that went under the hood for that in terms of a big refactor of how ACF stores field values and retrieves field values which will make it a lot easier for us to add integrations like this in the future. Um, the new WooCommerce product beta is also on our radar. That's something we're going to be looking into where WooCommerce has now revamped the way that they handle products. They have a custom product screen that's using React, um, but also it opens up um, things for us to have to improve performance of ACF fields. Currently right now, every ACF field has to do two queries to save and two queries to retrieve the values. Um, and that's because we're storing our field value in a separate query from our field key. Um, but this refactor means that maybe that doesn't always have to be the case. Um, I don't think we have that planned for 6.4, but it is something we're gonna be looking at very shortly after where any ACF updates will just be one query to get your values and one query to update your values, which should hopefully improve performance and is something that people have asked about quite a lot before. Um, so let me pause here, see if there's any questions in the chat or if anyone has any questions or wants to unmute, feel free. Um, yeah, so HPAS is high performance order storage, experience from that film. Uh, the app I'm using for MySQL is, what is it? Table Plus, um, very handy app, can't recommend it enough. Um, it also like, if I share my screen, it's getting a little bit off topic here, but it's one of my favorite features. Um, So if I wanted to delete some stuff from the table and just highlight it and delete it, but then it highlights it as red um, before you do it. So you can just ignore that or you can save and it deletes it then. It gives you a lot of really cool like confirmation. You can discard changes and it shows you what's changed and all that stuff. Very handy, MySQL app. Um, Earl, so 6.4, I think we are um, converting some of our fields into React fields. Uh, it won't be all of them, but I think part of our goal there is to um, start to figure that out on our side 
Um, and probably the best and easiest way to do that will be, you know, to like have a React text field. Um, you know, some of the fields are more complicated, like a Google Maps field that relies heavily on jQuery and the Google Maps API, JavaScript and all that stuff will probably come a bit later. Um, and things like repeaters and uh, flexible content fields are a lot more complicated as well. But it's definitely something that we're looking at and we'll be rolling out in a kind of phased approach. Earl, do you mind if I ask, um, Do you are you hoping to get this feature or is it one that you're more just trying to keep a pulse on so that you um, keep up to date with our changes? Um, a little of both, to be honest. I'm, I'm not sure how y'all will maintain backwards compatibility and do it. It seems like a huge, huge hurdle. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like very interested to see how you attack it architecturally because uh, I think it could help me on some things too. Um, but yeah, and I've, I've encountered some performance issues with the scale that we use some of the fields at sometimes and the data storage and then having to you know pull all of the fields and their HTML through admin Ajax. Um, at one point we had like a 20 megabyte payload and it just crashed the editor. Um, and so I've, I've since had to like re-architect and do something totally custom instead of using ACF repeaters for that data storage and stuff. Um, but it was a lot of extra work that I would rather have not done. I would rather have just leveraged ACF for that because it was complex repeater fields. Um, and also now I've redone it in React and it's like, it's really hard to make flexible one of the really cool things about ACF is like I could deploy these sites and then I can filter the fields in PHP and like change the values on the fly, change even the data types on the fly. You know, I could, I could change a select field to be a text input field all through PHP. It was super, super flexible. And I'm also a little, to be honest, worried that the more it moves to React, the less flexibility I'll have in the PHP to do some of those things. Um, and yeah, uh, again, very excited to see how you all might overcome those challenges and then I can do some cool stuff myself. <laughs> cool, yeah, yeah no, thank you. I think the extensibility is probably the main reason we haven't just kind of transitioned everything to React already. I mean, we all love React on this team, but um, we really have to keep that kind of at the front of our mind and make sure we're building out good APIs that work in all the ways that ACF works currently. Um, and it might be that there's some things we can't do in React that, you know, traditional HTML and PHP does allow, but it's definitely something we're going to try and um, keep in mind as we go forward. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, and it would be great to, um... I think get feedback from someone like yourself at even as we're iterating on some of these ideas, because I like you're the exact type of person with the exact type of problem that we talk about. Um, you know, you you're you're suffering performance issues with the size of the payload in Ajax. Um, so you could benefit from the speed of React, but um, you also need the flexibility. So um that's the exact uh problem that we discuss quite a bit while we're we're talking about this so um i mean that that was a great summary of the problems that you just gave there so yeah totally understand yeah i'm, I'm trying to do some of that myself to a much much more simplistic scale um for sure but if i end up having any like aha moments um i'm in the um, agency slack so i'll ping one of y'all in the acf um, um chat cool. thread would you would you be open to sending like us sending you questions or things for feedback along the way or yeah yeah please do absolutely um cool. i forget what my name is in there because i changed it but um i'll throw up something uh and i i bug liam sometimes too i don't think he's on the call today but i have cool. random questions right on thank you mm -hmm. thank you Um, 
Brian, uh, you had a question about the REST API endpoint. Uh, so was that, just to clarify, was that for specifically for um, HPOS, like for orders or? Oh, basically, if there is any change, because I think as far as I know, we haven't been able to directly update the uh, ACF fields inside the WooCommerce REST APIs. I think we had to use the ACF APIs to update these fields. If yeah. there's some change planned for, for the release or if this will be maybe in a later stage. Yeah, I mean, we don't have an integration directly with the WooCommerce uh, REST API yet. Um, that might be something that we can look into in the future, but as of right now, we just integrate directly with the um, core API. And then, yeah, we definitely recommend using our API whenever updating ACF fields, because there's a lot that goes on under the hood to make sure that things are stored in the correct format and retrieved in the correct format and any security considerations are accounted for as well. Um, so yeah, definitely something we can look into, um, especially if you wanna shoot us a email kind of describing your use case and um, we can get that, get a feature or a issue created for that so we can look into it further. I think I already did a uh, ticket on oh, the product cool. feedback board, but uh, nice. for us, it would be a little bit easier if we already have to update some other product data of uh, WooCommerce, if it will be in the same call, but still, I yeah. mean, we managed to do it now into separate calls. It's it's also doable. Not an issue. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah, I've just found your feedback request, Brian, on that. So we've got that noted. Um, and Brian, you also asked, the answer in the chat is in the Q&A as well, just to, that will we support custom fields in WooCommerce product variations? And I know this has been on our backlog for a while and you, you've requested it um, quite a few times and, and mentioned it. So it's obviously a pain point for you. We, it's not something that we're working on right now, but I think, as I said in the chat, Product variations are, I guess, a bit different to the way that the data is stored. So the HPOS work, the way that we're now being a bit more flexible with where data is stored for how we add fields to it makes that a bit more possible, I think, in the future um, and possibly easier to, to get to and prioritize. So keep fingers crossed for that. Uh, WooCommerce is doing quite a lot currently, so... <laughs> On all ends, there are changes and, and stuff. It's it's on one side really amazing, but yeah, hard to catch up on all points. So thanks for working on the HPOS part at least already. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. There's lots of changes. The product editor, is that is that still in beta or is that something that is now released and people are using? Have you switched to still using the new one? still in beta right now. Yeah. Right, okay. I haven't seen it on new installs or anything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, have you switched to it, or are you still on the sort of the classic version? Oh, not really. We we switched early to blocks, and it was quite an amazing experience, but also quite buggy, and a lot of extensions didn't support it, and we had to to go back a few times. So I think we learned a bit from it to wait until more of the extensions are ready. But yeah. I mean, for user perspective, I guess a lot of our Clients would love to have a great integration of ACF fields inside the Gutenberg editor. Same fields with these, or same feelings for these like old screens of WooCommerce, you know, as products and orders. So I think on their side, they will do quite some changes. New yeah. order statuses are coming, you know, there is like really a lot of, a lot of things which can be quite interesting for us to, to use. Yeah. Definitely. I have a sort of a general question about the the reactify fields, I guess, because I, I had an assumption, but then something you said earlier made me think maybe differently. When you're talking about reactifying sort of the ACF fields, are you talking about like the fields themselves or like in the instance of a text field, are you thinking there might be a type of field where it can be more natively edited similar to the paragraph or the heading? Like you can directly edit the template. 
Or are you just reactifying the fields themselves on the right hand side? The, it, it, a, bit a bit of both, point. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're bringing in 6.4 um, the ability to edit text and text area fields in blocks directly in the main block editor view rather than just in the sidebar and without having to turn the block into ed the edit form, the edit mode. And we, you could be able to click into that, into the text area and just start typing and changing it. Cause that's just a thing that people want to do and want to do easily without having to go to the sidebar or switch to the edit mode. But we're doing that without before doing the react work. Um, but the, I guess, yeah, the react, reactifying of our fields is for use within the block editor, like in the admin, basically, because we use our own fields to render the sidebar. And we do that all with like HTML that gets generated on the server side and then sent to the DOM, I guess. So it's not even, re they're not React, are they? It's just a load of HTML. Um, and are you waving at me because I'm technically out of my depth and you're going to help me? No, I just saw help? chat, Joe's leaving. And I was like, bye, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, but please help. But yeah, so that's I think we we are making our components, which are we're using our own fields, but creating that sidebar with React components, and that's the plan. I think. Interesting. So with the text field that you can click inside and edit within the block editor, be a separate field from a text field that you don't want someone to be able to do that. Uh. Yes, I think what we're going to do is the implementation of that. Like, so the block editor view, the preview view, uh, is dictated by your PHP template, and right. obviously at that point you might have a load of field data that isn't actually rendered quite obviously as text. It might be hidden or used as classes or whatever. But I think the way we're looking at implementing it is having some for some form of syntax or notation in the PHP template to say this is something that's editable text and that will then allow that functionality to happen in the editor rather than just everything's editable regardless of what you know whatever type it is or you know, we we have to get you as a developer to make that decision to say right i'm rendering this this text field as an h1 tag or an h2 tag in my php template and i'm going to wrap this in some form of syntax to say this is user editable in the block editor and that then becomes sort of effectively WYSIWYG, um, which is probably a bad term to use because it's a different, bit confusing, but yeah. No, and, no, but no. then eventually we will then reactify the sidebar using React components for um, all the text, the field types, and they'll use like native WordPress core components. So the editing experience will look very similar to um, core, like for example, the image field at the moment, the ACF image field has completely different hover buttons that appear in circles that are, you know, edit this image or remove this image. We will, that will be using core components. So that the, the user experience for editors will just be seamless. And then eventually we can maybe move to look, checking out ch uh, and, and improving the preview um, area. So not just clicking in text and editing it, but if you've got an image that you are rendering, an image field that you've rendered in your template as the image, you'd be able to click on that image and get the little toolbars, the toolbar that comes up for any block, which is like an image block. And you could say change image and you'll do it right there and then using kind of native block editor or Gutenberg components, I guess. So it, it will really kind of bring together the ACF block experience with WordPress core experience for, for making it better for everybody, I think. Yeah, and it'll it'll lessen those instances of like depending on what theme you have active. Sometimes you can have like style clashes with our fields and and like the core uh, fields. Like sometimes those clash, and you'll have something where it's like, oh no, in twenty twenty three theme, it I can't see the buttons or something like that. Uh, we usually fix those, but it'll be a lot less whack a mole as we go forward once these are all aligned with core. <laughs> Another thing about like changing the actual fields to React is that there's still a lot to learn about that, I think. Um, and I know that flexibility was a big thing for you. And, you know, it remains to be seen how flexible we can keep things if you're not going to the server to get something and PHP never runs in between. Um, so 
you know, and I know like you can filter things right now to change even the markup of a field if you need to, I think. And some of that stuff's going to be pretty hard. Like if we're using a WordPress component, you know, you can't change the HTML markup of that component. So there's certain things like, I think it's important just to note some of those things because we don't know exactly what can and can't be done when we reactify these fields, you know, from that perspective, um, like you, like you kind of pointed out, there is some flexibility that you lose when you move to something like react, um, as opposed to using PHP to render everything. So, you know, we still have to do some, some discovery on that, but it is a goal, I think. And whatever we find too, like we, we, we can contribute that to core if we really need some kind of extendability in a component or something like that. And and we have multiple people on the team that, that know that process and how to get that across the line if, if needed. Um, Liam's been extremely uh, uh, kind of watching and, and participating in a lot of the, the new um, custom field work that they're doing with like bindings and bits and all that stuff. So Liam's really focused on that. I've been really focused on data views um, because I want to make sure that like data views does have all that extendability that we need to allow you to attach fields to those things, maybe open some kind of like modal where you can edit the fields for certain posts and the new data view component, things like that. So we're all kind of watching those things and trying to figure out where do we need to push core to kind of enable certain things that we need. Because if, if we need it, then it's it's very likely that many other plugins need it. So it's it's not just for us that we're trying to do this thing. It's the better core altogether. Yeah. And, and the plans that we're talking about, like the reactifying stuff and making it, making almost fields editable like native blocks within the preview. Th these are longer term plans. They're, they're big pieces of work. So as much as we're, you know, bringing stuff in 6.4 for the editing of text and text areas, the the other work is, is going to be significant and it's going to be, you know, major releases away really. So just to yeah, set expectations. Yes, we got some questions in the sidebar here. Um, there's three of them. Let's blast through them. We got right now, do I need to create custom ACF blocks anytime that I want to output ACF data? Um, yes and no. Like you could have as part of your theme some PHP that, that outputs at a certain part in your render um, some data but then you would also need fields attached to those posts so that it has data to pull from to reference. Um, so you could also create a block to output that data and then that, that data would be saved within that block. So two different ways you can do that. Um, I hope that the answers The second it. question makes me think maybe we're using an FSE theme. And if that's- So the second question is, is there a way to create an ACF post template block in a site with FSE? Well, I've, um, I've kind of run into both, so that's why I have, and and I was just getting good at doing the templates in the old way, but like not using blocks. And so now with blocks, I'm completely confused about what to do. So, so are you in, in the template? FSE theme? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Are you, well, are you working with an FSE theme, like a block theme? Uh, well, so not normally, but but I I did have to throw one together really quickly for a, like a new branded thing. And so then in there, I was like, I watched a tutorial about block bindings and I was like, oh, this will be perfect. But then I couldn't get it to actually pull in the data. So I think there must have been something that I missed putting in functions, PHP or or something well, because... I, I also wonder so is, this is in the template right like you're editing not a post but you're editing the actual layout of a certain template page or something like that uh trying yeah to do like a single okay. post template so or, I, I think like, me basically and... like for people's yeah. data like first name you know title company and and are those fields attached to that post type because because uh, matt and yeah. i were running into this earlier in the week where we we're like wait what happens when you do actually put an acf block as part of a template where it's it's sort of a placeholder to be filled in with data um and from what we were experimenting with it, it, it references the current id but you need to make sure that the fields attached to that post type match the names of the ones that the block is expecting and i think it just links everything up um 
Yeah, but yeah, I it, mean, it's a very early version of that feature, I think. <laughs> well, I know. And that's, I think the tutorial that I watched was like 0.5 and now 0.6 is out and something has changed. But, but, I, you know, I was trying to edit like the single post type, like in the, in the native full site editing, because it sounded like it was going to be able to, to grab those. The field group is definitely sh only for that custom post type. Interesting. But, and I that tried was like, with um, block bindings rather than ACF blocks, right? Um, yes. Yes. Well, that was, yeah, that's what I was trying. I don't yeah. That's why I'm wondering, like, because I just haven't had time to go through the whole tutorial for the ACF ones. Um, and yeah, so, so I haven't tried block bindings in a post template before. Um, oh, okay. I, mean, it's, I haven't either. It's just a newer feature. So we, we do have, you know, an ACF integration with block bindings. Um, I have tested that pretty thoroughly with, you know, individual posts and that sort of thing. Um, in a post template, uh, I kind of want to give that a try as soon as I get off, just to make sure that's working as we expect. Um, but also uh, the other option is you can create an ACF block and then um, set it to, there's a setting for in the block.json called use post meta. Um, and that means that it will grab the values from the post meta for the post. So if you put one of those blocks in your post template, um, any ACF fields should kind of just pull through uh, whatever you have set in the post meta. So you could set the field group to show up on all posts in that post type um, and it should all just pull through I think um would it be yeah de AC definitely sorry go I'm ahead sorry would it be like ACF slash post meta or would it be core post meta uh it would be the ACF post meta okay I, um I so that's kind of it's kind of what we did for bindings before bindings were fully implemented um it just works on ACF blocks, but also only on ACF values. So whatever you have saved in the post meta, um, you can add a block to a page with this configuration enabled um, that's using post meta. And whenever you fill out values for that block, it'll save directly to the post meta as well. Kind of like how um, traditional ACF has always worked before the block editor. Um, that's why we kind of implemented it because it's kind of a bridge between um, going full block editor with all your data saved in, you know, uh, the, you know, the serialized comments that blocks are saved as, um, and also just it's a step between that and normal post meta yeah. values. Okay, because. So, and I'm sorry if if this stuff is really <laughs> elementary because I, I you know like I said I was just getting good at PHP templates um because what I what I would like ultimately what I would like to do it, you know this is for like an internal client um so I would like the ad you know the administrative assistant to be able to fill out a little form for each new person, new partner, and and then have it spit out on the page like a template. You know, I mean, I want to do it kind yeah. of the old way, but I don't really know how to do that in an in an FSE site. Yeah, I think um, we probably want to do some testing on our side. I mean, Liam is our uh, full site editing guy. Unfortunately, he is traveling on our way to uh, Austin for our team meetup, which we're doing next week. So that's why he's not here today. Um, but uh, I do want to test some things out on my end. And if you want to shoot us an email, kind of just, we're happy to kind of walk th walk down that path and figure out the best way forward. I know it's definitely something that ACF will support. It's just what's the best way to do that in FSE and what will what will probably be easiest for your client as well. Um I think yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, top that of would, mind for just me, ahead so. of us. <laughs> you're you're yeah, just ahead I mean, of us. Okay. <laughs> the canary in the coal mine. Yeah. By that, like a week. <laughs> 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 well 
Well, it does and it sound was kind of. I was going <laughs> to come to the last one, and then I ended up having to take my cat to the vet at the last minute, and so that I missed it. And then you guys were like, "Oh, it's going to be monthly now," and I was like, "Oh no!" So, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm and I'm still getting used to like all the steps of like making sure something there's you know if I have to put a function in functions PHP and you know so I'm sure I probably have missed something in that yeah. tutorial or I don't know um but yeah it would be really use I mean what would be really useful is if there was a way to have like like a front end form that could then you know like give me a give a draft custom post you know, I mean, I have it as a custom post type, like give me a draft post that then that admin can just approve and then it would go live. But and, and I think we've got that. I mean, that's what ACF forms does, right? I yeah, think. I mean, that sounds exactly like ACF forms. Like I almost wonder if this needs to be like a blocker full site editing thing at all. And if it uh, can just be ACF forms. Yeah, because if, if you're a user way of getting is... around. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, is there a way of getting around the FSE and kind of doing it more like the old way? I think when... you can still just create templates, right? Traditional PHP templates, even with the rest of the site using full site editing. I think, am I completely wrong there? I think you're right because it's the content area is the content area and everything else is you define. Ah. And, and I think, Jennifer, it depends on who and where you want that data to be done and to be inputted. Is it a site uh, like editor or author who's got access to the back end who will be going to like add new post type and then, you know, filling in the data through the, the block editor? Or is it someone who's just going to the front of the site and submitting a form and then somebody in the back office is doing that work to approve it? Uh, I mean, it... it it could be either way, depending on what I'm able to create, I guess. Like if, if it's a front end, I get like, even if it's a front end form, it would kind of be on a hidden page. So it would be like, we would just send that link to someone who has agreed to be a partner and yeah. let them fill out their own information. Yeah. Is I mean, that's, that, that's know, probably the quickest way of, of getting it up and running because you can just output the, the front end form um, it as a short code in the template that then will, uh, the page template or even in the page content and use that on the front end hidden. Or you can go down the road, route of creating a block to collect all that data, save it to post meta and have that block in the single post type template in, in the FSE theme. And then okay. obviously have them have them logging in as an admin or an editor to do that. Um, so, could, so can I like, can I create a, a post template, you know, a PHP file with the regular get the fields and all that, I can create that and put it in an FSE site and that would still. You should be able to use that as the template for that site. I think that should still work. Yeah, okay. it's not a hybrid theme kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of like in the middle there. Um, <laughs> right, I know. I don't think, think you about have it as like FSE unless you want to be. Yeah, I mean, imagine like WooCommerce, right? Before like WooCommerce uh, pages for orders and things like that still needed to be defined in the old way while still having the ability to do full site editing. So you I, should be I able to still define the WooCommerce site. Uh, okay. so, so, but, but but the ability to do a hybrid approach, I think, is 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 possible because yeah. of okay. that. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the only reason it's FSE is because I needed to create something really quickly like two days, you know, throw something up that wasn't Wait for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. I mean, I think what you're describing makes total sense to me. You just want somebody to go in and fill out a form. It doesn't need to be blocks. They just right. need some fields. They need to fill them out. They don't need access to the block editor. They don't need all that extra complication, but then yeah. you will be able to choose quickly in the site editor where that data shows up in a template. Exactly. I just want it to yeah. spit out on a page in a certain style, you know, like a grid of the people and their titles and company names. And and I guess to answer your third question, will block bindings allow you to create native blocks for ACF data eventually? Yes. And that kind of works now. Obviously, the block bindings feature is very early and you have to kind of do it in a very codey way in the editor. Mm -hmm. 
Um, right. But I think the answer there is more, it depends on how simple the data is and how complex you want to use the data because so for block bindings itself is only limited to certain blocks like text and paragraph and heading and image maybe and that's about it um to use the date to bind you know the the date the field values to either the text the heading or the paragraph or the image url for example so if you're just doing simple kind of you know i just output this text in a heading or output this text into a paragraph then definitely block bindings works you don't necessarily oh. need to create an acf block there is a bit of overhead there and you don't you know it's just the experience of creating a block binding right now until core adds a ui for that and you can select like okay this is my image field where do i want my url coming from oh a binding to this acf field and select from a drop down until we've got all of that which we will support um the ui it, it's just a bit bit hard a bit finickety to do really um but yeah. i guess acf blocks will always be there for the more complicated things where you know you're collecting data in a repeater or a, a gallery and you want to like output all of that data in a template with loads of styling or loads of classes or external um sort of javascript things to create a slide or, or something that needs you not just to render the data kind of raw um right so yeah it's block bindings is definitely like the it's like a very um modern way of doing a short code let's just, just go and get that bit of data and output it in line yeah the the putting the, like doing the code editor on that front end i mean it's a little odd but i didn't find it difficult i just couldn't get it to show anything but the placeholder text that i had put in it wouldn't it wouldn't pull from those acf from the custom post type i guess yeah well it sounds like we're going to do a bit of testing on that and drop us an email if you, yeah we'll, if you... we'll look into that because I, I have noticed a little bit of weirdness like this week of of fse and, and acf blocks together kind of just it might be even a, just a setting or something that you need to enable that that yeah. would make okay. it work so we'll, we'll look into that and definitely shoot us an email or a, a support request and mention that 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 we told you to in chat friday so that it gets escalated okay. to us okay great thanks for the questions Jennifer. that was good yeah, thank you. Um, well, there's, I think that is the last of our questions in chat. Um, and we are at time. So I think it's a good time to wrap it up. Thank you for coming. Uh, I came late. So thank you for the team for running that. That sounded like a really helpful uh, um, session. We'll be back in a month's time. And we'll, we'll stick this video and the blog post on the website so people can catch up. All righty. Thanks, everyone. See, See you next time. See you.